morning, my friend. The marketplace of ideas is open. It is great to have you along. Welcome to the Greg Belfred Show. The big news this morning is not the election. It's not what's going on in the Republican primary or anything else. It really is the killing of this 22-year-old uh, Lachan Riley. She was... 22 years old, nursing student at Augusta University at the Athens campus, and uh, she was found dead last Thursday after a room, uh, one of her roommates reported that she'd gone to for a morning run on the campus and never returned. And it turned out that she was v- brutally just murdered by um, a man who's in the country illegally. He's a Venezuelan citizen. And immigration authorities say, yeah, he came into the country illegally. In fact, he was caught, released, and so on. And it's just uh, really illustrates the what's going on with the president's policy right now regarding this catch and release and what it, it what it means and what we're seeing and so uh, i'm looking at i'm watching the story right now on fox uh, fox news channel and the chiron's read uh says that illegal immigrant accused of disfiguring skull of the student It's how brutal this crime was. And so Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, talking about this, he said, we just have a nightmare in this country with mass migration. He said, that is a failure of our system on multiple levels and at multiple times, and it has resulted in a young woman's death. This is inexcusable in any absence of any real effort by the Biden administration to step up and address this crisis as they continue to ignore the calls for meaningful policy change that governors like me have made for well over two years. And uh, and what's the president doing? Oh, he's having uh, having ice cream with Seth Meyers on late night TV. I mean... So, and then, and that insanity is all throughout the Democrat Party, because then you get the Georgia Democrat Senate Minority Leader, Gloria Butler, she is saying Looney Tune stuff, Um, she's calling the Republican response to Riley's death appalling, and Republicans are to blame for this. Oh, you knew it was going to come to that, right? You knew it would come to the fact that Republicans would be to blame. She says, our border crisis continues because Donald Trump has convinced one party that the only thing that matters is putting Donald Trump first, no matter the cost. Oh, yeah. That's what's happening. I mean... And it's it's just absolutely uh, crazy. So you, you you've got this just bizarre Democrat response to what's going on. It's a horrible story, terribly tragic. What we're seeing, complete breakdown of law and order, a complete breakdown of people taking responsibility. I mean. And so Donald Trump responded to this on on a True Social. He said the horrible murder of 22-year-old Locke and Riley at the University of Georgia should have never happened. He said the monster who took her life illegally entered our country in 2022 and then was released again by radical Democrats in New York after injuring a child, Trump said. And then he went on to say, when I am your president, we will immediately seal the border, stop the invasion, and on day one, we will begin the largest deportation operation of illegal criminals in American history. May God bless Locke and uh, Riley and her family. Our prayers are with you. 
it's just really something else, isn't it, as you watch this? Bill O'Reilly is somebody that I, that, that I still follow, and he was on Just the News, No Noise a television show talking about this issue of, of, of Riley and her death. And, and, and I appreciate Bill O'Reilly's approach on a lot of things. Not always agree with him, but I appreciate his approach on a lot of things. And Bill O'Reilly said, you know, you've got to be careful exploiting the, the depth of Locke and Riley. He said, just as I was very careful with Kate Steinle 10 years ago, was killed by a migrant who had violated deportation five times. You've got to be careful with this, he's saying. You know, um, and he was talking about, with Kate Steinle, he said, we almost had it passed, Kate's Law, which would have made it possible for the federal authorities to incarcerate someone, anyone, who comes back to this country after being deported for a minimum of five years. Second offense, ten years. That would have stopped a lot of this madness that we have. And then he says, but it was Senator Mitch McConnell who killed that bill single-handedly, even though most of the Republican senators were behind it. And I don't think the Democrats at that point would have opposed it. Now we have a situation where you have catch and release. This man from Venezuela, you know, comes in 2022, didn't ask for asylum, just snuck across, they caught him, and they let him go. And that's the Biden policy, catch and release. So if you got 10 million foreign, and O'Reilly's on to something with this. He's on to something with this. You know, it's the numbers of people that we are talking about. There is a percentage of those folks who are evil, horrible people. And he said, so if you've got 10 million foreign nationals coming into the country, 10% of those are evil people because 10% of every group is evil. Said all, And he said, no matter what the group is, uh, one out of 10 are going to do bad things. So now we have these people roaming around. Does Biden care about this young woman who is now dead? No. He doesn't care about all the people who have been hurt by his open border policy. He doesn't care. That's the theme that should be emphasized around the country. So that's the take of Bill O'Reilly. Meanwhile, the White House then, um, the president, of course, on with uh, Seth Meyers having a friendly little chat degrading Donald Trump and insulting Trump and and, and, and many of Americans, I believe. And all the White House can do then when it comes to Locke and Riley is release a statement expressing their deepest condolences to the family and loved ones of Locke and Hope Riley. People should be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law if they are found to be guilty. Wow. It's just, so where was the president? Oh, he was, uh, he was chatting with uh, Seth Myers over ice cream yesterday. And so on uh, late night, uh, the president said uh, there were a, a couple of things. He said, number one, you got to take a look at the other guy. He's about as old as I am, but he can't remember his wife's name. Oh, the crowd loved that. Number two, it's about how old your ideas are. Look, this is a guy who wants to take us back. He wants to take us back on Roe v. Wade. He wants to take us back on a whole range of issues that are 50, 60 years. They've been solid American positions. You know, he's right about that. Biden is right about that. The, they have been pretty solid American positions because the left has infiltrated this com- this country. And it it's the Supreme Court who's been rolling back some of these things that they that they said, well, it's, it's it's progress. Supreme Court's rolling back progress. That's what the president's out there saying this on Seth Meyers last night. And he said, oh, his administration has gotten some good things done. I'd like to see the list, Mr. President. 
I'd like to see the list of good things that you say you've done. Yeah, let's see what they are. Um, while the president and Myers uh, were enjoying uh, ice cream, uh, the president was asked by a reporter when he expected the uh, ceasefire between Israel and Hamas to begin. And uh, the president said, ice cream in hand, he hoped by at least the end of the weekend. He said, at least my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. It's not done yet. But my hope is by next Monday we'll have a ceasefire. That's the one piece of, I think, legitimate news that actually came out of that. Now, there are a lot of people that are outraged. About, we talk about this, uh, the murder of Locke and Riley. Um, it's not only frustration with the Democrats and what's happening with the border. It's outrage with the legacy media. And the legacy media that refuses to report. You, you know what they were trying to? AP headline, this college student was out. Focusing on, yes, yeah, safety of women who are jogging. That's the headline. So, focus, the, the, the AP, the Associated Press, focusing on the safety of women who may go jogging. Nothing about the fact that, and other, other legacy media is the same way. Nothing about the fact, or buried deep within the story, do you even learn that this guy has been deported previously back in the country? I mean, they don't even mention it. I mean, that's how broken the media is in this country today. And they don't even focus on these things. New York Post editorial board's got a head, uh, a, excuse me, um, editorial today highlighting this, and the headline is Legacy Media Shields Locke and Riley's Alleged Killer and His Enabler, Joe Biden. Because that's really what we're saying. They're absolutely correct about that. It's Joe Biden who's bringing these people in by the boatloads. And so, uh, as I mentioned to you, the AP... um, which is currently being sued for its links to Hamas, they say, conveniently failed to mention in a report on the murder of Locke and Riley that the suspected killer crossed the U.S. border illegally from Venezuela. Instead, they made the story about the fears of solo female athletes, cited recommendations that Female runners carry pepper spray or a whistle and run during daylight hours or with a friend. And they, in other words, they say they were sliding right up to the edge of victim blaming. NBC, the inconvenient detail of uh, this guy being an illegal immigrant way down in the 37th paragraph of a story on Sunday. And this go, just goes on and on. So you've got the legacy media who's not reporting the truth, burying the details, or not giving them at all as to this guy's status in the country. It's illegal. In the midst of that, you know, the president's making a trip to the border. And uh, you've got reaction from those who say the only reason the president's going to the border is to save himself. This is a story from the Washington Examiner. And the National Border Patrol Council said the president, you know, after repeatedly stating that there is no crisis, his trip is too little, too late. And they went on to say, but even if he were to put the proper policies in place at this late hour, he'd only be doing it in order to save his presidency. And self-serving actions, when time is winding down, should always give Americans pause. I would agree with that. I would agree with that, absolutely. Common sense dictates that as a lame duck, he'd revert to his open border policies if reelected. 
So they say the only reason uh, the president making that border trip really to save himself. What's the president's focus on other than ice cream? Um, the president today will convene with the top four congressional leaders at the White House later today, and he really wants to uh, talk about passing this emergency aid package for Ukraine, very much on Ukraine and Israel. So he has summoned them to the White House today. Just incredible. Other stories that are out there. Governor Kristi Noem met with uh, Donald Trump at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach yesterday, according to the Daily Caller. So the question, people are wondering, they talk about the vice presidency, potentially her joining the Trump ticket, which we don't know. Um, but no one has certainly indicated that she would be very open to it. She said, I mean, in terms of being Trump's running mate, she said, I would in a heartbeat, just because You respect the position and the person who asks you to do something and then see if you really believe that you could make a difference, she had um, told Newsmax. So she and Trump met at um, his estate in Mar-a-Lago. And again, we don't, likely they may have been talking about that. Trump is, uh, she's on Trump's short list. We've had that story. Over the last uh, several days, that news has been out there. Other big stories this morning. Emergency crews were called to the home of Donald Trump Jr. This is Trump's oldest son. Because there was a letter containing white powder that it had been uh, sent to his home. And so crews were there. Uh, Officials say they don't believe, they do not believe that it was deadly. And um, Trump Jr. opened the letter, contained a death threat in his home office, and then emergency responders were there and wearing hazmat suits. They responded. So there's an investigation underway to determine, a, and again, it officials say they do not believe that it was deadly. Also, another story this morning, big one, is uh, the Supreme Court is debating state laws restricting social media content um, moderation. So content moderation on social media. The the U.S. Supreme Court began hearing arguments yesterday about how a number of state laws restricting how large social media companies moderate user content. Um, and there were, a, there were laws that were passed in Florida and Texas, and they're being challenged now in court that would require big tech companies um, like X, then Facebook, others, any of these social media giants, um, to moderate the the social media content. So there were a lot of questions and and discussion, and the Supreme Court then getting into that. Also, there are uh, there are a couple. This story, you know, the film Mary Poppins, right? The Disney classic Mary Poppins. So I love that movie. It's a, a wonderful movie. Well, the British Board of Film Classification has branded Mary Poppins now as not suitable for children to watch alone. And they want to change the rating. You can't let kids watch this the film alone, and they say it's because of discriminatory language in the in the in the film. 
and there is, I think it's a, um, it's the word Hottentot that is used in that movie. And it is uh, a term that was used mainly in the 18th and 19th centuries in conversation, generally to refer to someone as a barbarian or just uh, simply uncivilized. And then originally it referred to a nomadic society of South Africa was a, with the Hottentots, and that that word is used a number of times in Mary Poppins. And because of that, um, they are changing the rating and saying the children should not be able to watch that film alone. <laughs> more, more lunacy. And that's a look at the big stories this morning.